the purpose of this class is twofold one is to make you aware of the group discussion approach and also to use that approach to get inputs from all of us towards identifying sub parts of the larger problem and seek possible solutions for that problem how many of you have participated in any group discussion many of you as a part of what activity sorry placement all so all of you are familiar with group discussion as a method of placement some of you who or some of your friends who would have appeared for interviews for admission to the management schools they would have faced group discussion is also a kind of placement a different kind of placement to being offered a studentship in that college unfortunately the main purpose of group discussion is neither the group discussion that is conducted for placement and the group discussion that is conducted for admission to an mba program are merely assessments to find out whether you are good at group discussions or not now here is a dilemma if the only time you have participated in the group discussion is for an assessment for either employment or for admission that means you have not really understood the objective and purpose of the group discussion so any idea what is the objective of the of a group discussion outside the placement and admission come on many of you have participated in group discussion there is an exchange of ideas exchange of ideas could also happen between two individuals or even if there is a crowd of five or six people a general conversation could also lead to exchange of ideas you are right but a group discussion does something more a group discussion is usually structured okay so what do we mean by structured so the group discussion is structured what exactly do we mean by structured so how do we structure a group discussion come on you can cite from the experience that you had in the group discussion who starts it any one person can anyone discuss. from the group is there no moderator present during your group discussion it depends so in a group discussion happens within an organization outside the ambit of employment or admission generally some kind of either a hierarchy or a pre appointment prevails so either the senior most person initiates that discussion or a person pre appointed to moderate that discussion controls the discussion so usually one part of structuring is that there is a moderator in fact the advantage of moderator is twofold the moderator is a person who who does who permits everybody to express the views but does not let any single person hog the entire time and avoids repetition of points a moderator is also a time keeper and a note keeper so it is the responsibility of the moderator to write minutes of that group discussion at the end and the moderator must say that okay we have exactly 50 minutes for this group discussion we must preserve the last 7 minutes for conclusions and therefore the time shall be allocated like this why is that important because otherwise each one of us who is so eager to say something you know all of us like love to listen to our own voice right it's a natural for all human being so we would like to speak continuously for all the time but in the process we might curtail the articulation of some important points which somebody else might have thought that's the reason why the group discussion has to be moderated and that is the reason why the moderator has to take care of these things plus at the end of the day within two days all of us may tend to forget some or all the points that were discussed and any conclusions derived at. 
and therefore some notes have to be taken on what all right so today we shall have a brief group discussion not for the purpose of employment not for the purpose of admission not for the purpose of spending time in a class but for the purpose of understanding how a group discussion is an extremely important thing for multiple people to make contributions to certain thought process in fact the topic i have chosen for this thought process is precisely accentuating this very activity of group discussion namely building and nurturing collaborating communities what do you understand by collaborating communities community is a group of people communities is multiple groups of people multiple groups of people each group individually collaborating with all members of that group for achieving certain purpose so a collaborating group is a group which collaborates in our context for solving a problem and when we say multiple such groups we call them collaborative community the best example of collaborative communities are open source communities how many of you have gone to github or sourceforge.com in your life many now whenever you look at a project apart from finding out what that particular software piece does you might also out of curiosity have seen the people behind that project one of the hallmarks of those open source projects which succeed versus the others which do not is the establishment of large collaborating communities behind a particular project while linux competes with the best of uh, the operating systems in the world because linux has an extraordinarily large community supporting you take other well known pieces of software that we use which came from open source take moodle for example take drupal for example now these have large collaborative communities there are international conferences where people who are all volunteers actually pay money from their own pockets to attend such conferences exchange views and collaborate further so these are the examples of collaborative communities i'll tell you another reason why this particular topic is of importance to us at iit bombay and for some activities that we are doing for the whole nation i had briefly mentioned i think when i was telling you that those of you who do not have a seminar registered for might want to work on literature survey on some other topics that i will give one of the objectives of today's session is also to evolve such topics and in the process everybody to understand what exactly we mean by this so let me tell you where we need collaborative community you are familiar with the fact that we are undertaking large scale teachers training program we train 10000 teachers at a time we have trained 1 lakh teachers you are also aware of the fact that massive open online courses have emerged in the world and iit bombay specifically is offering courses the small difference we want to create these courses in multiple indian languages starting with engineering education going to college education and then going to school education that is the objective and in the process there is a commitment that iit bombay has established that all the knowledge content so created in the process of offering moocs will always be released under creative commons in open source for every human being to benefit now if you want to create quality content can it be only a job of a few teachers who design that course there are groups of few teachers designing such courses in every university iit bombay is no exception of course our courses are better because our teachers have perhaps more experience and are better placed to understand whatever is of significance in a course so probably they give better courses but does it mean that they are the only ones who are knowledgeable in that topic no does it mean that for a particular problem the best explanation can only be given by one of the iit professors nonsense there are many teachers across the country many students across the country who can write better explanations for a particular problem better examples can be created by them better quiz questions can be created by them where is the opportunity for such large number of possible contributors to contribute to creation of such knowledge and its incorporation in a course the point is 
Thousands of people might be writing examples and quiz problems and so on. Thousands of people might be writing ex explanations and examples, but they do not come into a textbook. Textbook is written by one author or two authors. Exactly the same thing about a course. When massive open online courses happen, there is a possibility that a single course which become so predominantly useful because it is meaningful and useful that it might prevent innovation from happening at other places among other students and among teachers. How do you prevent that? You prevent that by saying, look, this is a course. We take this as a beginning course. Let's say course on thermodynamics. So three great people from mechanical engineering, Gai Tondek, uh, Bhandarkar and uh, uh, Melinda Tre do that course. Their, their course is well known across the world, by the way, already. Yet, if they say, now look here, this is the course. But these are 10,000 people who have taken the course, teachers, students alike. Make contributions of your own. Now people will make contributions. So this is the glimpse of a collaborative community that is being created. Unfortunately, this act alone is not adequate because many of those contributions could be done. I mean, I'm an enthusiastic person from a small village like community. I'm good at technology, but my way of explaining is so rubbish. I can't write correct English. So what I write is useless. The other person, on the other hand, who explains better even than the teachers at IIT Bombay. How do you distinguish between the two? Well, somebody should edit, somebody should review. Agreed? This is what happens in technical literature that is published. There are reviewers, blind reviewers, etc., etc., and then a paper gets accepted. Here we are talking about a large number of small content being submitted by individuals voluntarily and the need to edit them. Can we request Gaitonde, Bandarkar and Melinda Tre to edit such submissions? Of course we can. And they will do it as long as such submissions are about five or six a month. But if there are 10,000 students, and if all take this challenge enthusiastically, there will be 10,000 submissions. My colleagues may resign from IIT Bombay if they are forced to look at these. They cannot. In fact, no human being can. Is there any automated process of assessing the meaningfulness of the submission? So far not. You are all computer science students. Hopefully someday you will create that. But today we don't have. You need human being. So what is the mechanism to do that? Have you heard of crowdsourcing? And have you heard of peer assessment? In a way, when I requested you that you should record your five minutes of public speech and also comment on some other colleague's public speech. When you comment on some other's public speech, you are actually doing a peer review. Peers means equals, people who are doing something similar. So while so 10,000 people submit their assessment, we randomly pick out these assessments and randomly pick out people and say, look, you 10 people will assess these five submissions. Each one assesses five submissions, gives a grade, A, B, C, etc., whatever, whatever. Now look at the objective when you are operating at large scale. You are not interested in the ranking all 10,000 submissions. First, second, 4,458th on any parameter. You are not interested. But you are interested in gross filtering of these 10,000 submissions. Not very good at all. Not to be seen further. Okay, reasonable and the best. Because you know that the best have a chance to be finally approved for inclusion in the main course. So you are looking at the best assessment, uh, best submissions and the people who make those best submissions because they are capable of making further submissions like that. Agreed? The point is, without any human intervention, without any human management, how do you initiate this activity? How do you permit peer assessment to happen? How do you automatically collect all the results? 
how do you make groups of people who submit the best okay and useless kind of submissions and more important how do you then start assessing the assessors you have made groups of 10 people saying each one assesses five and so on and so forth now imagine that out of all these assessment which is a peer assessment done automatically certain best assess things come up what if i give the same set of best so called things which have emerged for a re peer assessment among the larger number of people and now i am assessing the peers in their assessing capability i can do two things i can ask them to do a more refined assessment i know they are all good or whatever so i can say the best or this parameter that parameter and find out their judgment one i can get a further filtered out components of these artifacts which have been submitted by people and more important i will know who are the people who assess meaningfully and correctly agreed now suppose i have an automated process which makes a group of such editors and moderators prospective reviewers at the higher level and of course another list of names which is a group of people who make such submission i mentioned 10000 people which is not uncommon for a mooc course to have participated all 10000 may not submit but 10% will and of course if you make an assignment of one mark in that course which is dependent on your making some submission then all 10000 people will make submissions common sense right so you have these submissions now imagine that you have multiple subjects that are being offered and you want to create such artifacts for multiple subjects best artifacts can you not apply the same mechanism and create multiple communities which are subject wise organized now when you organize things subject wise it might appear that you are organizing them automatically but hierarchically mechanical engineering thermodynamics fluid mechanics whatever computer science databases algorithm data structures is that always true there might be a person who has extraordinary capability of contributing to a thermodynamics course and also a numerical computation course so what do you need additionally you need a mechanism for a taxonomy to emerge because you would like to classify you will like to tag every artifact remember not thousands now lakhs of artifacts have been submitted some of these are video clips some of these are explanations some of these are problems some of these something else they all pertain to different topics within thermodynamics or computer programming or whatever would you not like each such submission to be tagged by multiple keywords so that later on anybody can collect all the material which pertains to or which has linked to a particular keyword so you require to evolve a taxonomy now we are talking about something really large scale we are talking about kick starting a process which will build collaborative communities in order to a submit individual contributions b peer assess these contributions c come up with a ranking or a marking saying these submitters generally submit good quality things so you have a good quality submissions good quality submitters and good quality reviewers good job so far useful but now you want to nurture these communities suppose we kick started from iit bombay and such 8000 different communities get set up across the country each community or 10 or 15000 people and i am talking about a situation where we are not limiting ourselves to engineering education high school maths high school science history geography accounting can you imagine the the prospective now how do you nurture them there cannot be a human control but there has to be some sort of a control how do you do that so you have to build leadership
in the world leadership is either self imposed by an extraordinarily capable person who can ramrod everybody else and say i am the leader and then people meekly listen to him or the person is democratically elected how can you automate such a process again fall back and learn about the open source communities something which you have never bothered to learn how do these communities thrive how do they continue their existence they continue because leadership emerges from out of the same group somebody starts taking initiative somebody says i will coordinate this somebody says i will manage this side several other people find or like such a coordination and they agree to work in collaboration with that person so that person becomes first among the equal leadership therefore has to evolve and our system whatever we build must permit evolution of such leadership so you see we have already identified a huge lot of software components that are required to build such a system such a common system does not exist anywhere although there are components of such collaboration galore open source i mentioned how many of you are familiar with wikipedia process all of you read wikipedia articles but you are computer science students i am amazed that you are not curious to find out how does wikipedia itself run do find that out both in terms of the software that wikipedia incorporates because it is a scalable software remember whatever we are doing has to be scalable there are likely to be 50 lakh to 1 crore users out of 120 crore citizens of this country that is the ambition 50 lakh to 1 crore users spanning considering only the knowledge handling component that we are interested in as an institution primary school middle school high school junior college college electives research everything okay the only requirement every content that is contributed is committed to be given out in open source and majority of the people work voluntary but voluntary work in terms of contributions in terms of peer assessment may actually work will it work for leadership level where leaders have to spend more time than normal so can we think of some incentives incentives need not only be in the form of money to be paid it could also be in the form of recognition public recognition so let's say the ministry of human resource development or aict or some such body recognizes such contributors and such reviewers and actually mentions them in a list sends that list in recognition does anything else again this process also has to be automated although it will be more structured so you need database of people database of artifacts connected through taxonomy or database of taxonomy itself and the entire transactional process of submission peer review peer assessment grading voting like dislike ranking can you not see practically all aspects of computer science dealing with data management information management on large scale are at play here there is a second component of building of such communities and building of such uh, what should i say uh, open source content creation or oer creation and that is the huge amount of research potential that the data itself will permit you to use all these oers or open educational resources will eventually find their place through peer review and editing etc into the course content how nice it would be if 5 years later the iit bombay x course on thermodynamics still has gaitonde bandarkar and professor atre as the as the teachers or a database course done by sir sudarshan and sada they have still the names as teacher or a data structure course which ajit divan ganesh and i are design but along with these names along with their material with sincere acknowledgement you have 200 other artifacts which have filtered out through this process and which are acknowledged and incorporated in the course wouldn't iit bombay be proud wouldn't it be very useful to large number of people now that is the object 
we are actually embarking on building such software. So, Professor Mausam, I don't know how many of you have heard of him. He is a researcher, he is a faculty member at IIT Delhi. We wanted him to come here, but he joined IIT Delhi, which is okay. And Professor Ganesh and I are going to build this. Another thing which I will quickly tell you, another large project which we are likely to actually venture into, this started by Ministry of Culture. And they want to build a national virtual library of India. Basically, all cultural heritage. The last 4,000 years of recorded history and hundreds of thousands of years of unrecorded history. So you take Bagha caves or whatever, whatever, which were constructed maybe 50,000 years ago. Now you are aware of all the archaeological sites, you are aware of museums, you are aware of manuscripts, you are so many things. The entire cultural heritage of the country, they want to capture in a virtual library and make it accessible to people. Can you not find a huge similarity between doing that task and building open educational contents? You have exactly the same kind of thing. You have short video clips, you have descriptions, you have handwritten documents which are digitized, you have photographs, and you have a taxonomy saying what is what. And you need a community. For example, if somebody from the area of Hampi says that, look, I went to your site and this Vijayanagar empire that you write, is, this, is, this is okay. But my great-great-grandfather had preserved a piece of paper which throws some additional light on this particular aspect of history in this year. Now, that's a contribution. There has to be a mechanism to review it, assess it, authenticate it additionally and incorporate it. So, you see, once you build this kind of system, it could be used for variety of purposes. We don't know our history well, by the way, because it is not written by us. Only the other day in that Abhyuday, I gave a talk on uh, digital in uh, financial inclusion. And I showed a photograph saying, do you recognize him? And they didn't. Then I said, is Mohammed bin Tughlaq. And many people had blank faces. Then I said, don't you know that he was one of the early kings in Delhi? Ah, some people had heard of him. What special things he has done? Nobody knew. Two important things. He tried to shift his capital to a central place in his empire, Devgi. The second, he said gold and silver coins are horrendously costly, so I could use uh, copper coins, and he minted copper coins. He failed in both, not because he was wrong, but because he was ahead of his time. And of course, the mechanism he used, because he was the king, he ramrodded everything, he ordered. You cannot build a trust which is required in a currency by ordering people to trust. But today all of us use Gandhi Baba's notes, right? When it says 500 rupees, we believe it is 500 rupees. What was wrong with Muhammad being Tubrak? He at least was giving a physical copper coin with some weight. But no, that time he could not succeed. Anyway, I digress. But what I want to tell you is that this national virtual library would permit the whole of the country with humongous diversity, we actually learn and appreciate our own history and historical heritage proper. So I have only yesterday I took a decision that we'll participate in this and do it. It's a big project. But now again, in order to make such projects successful, we need this. Now I will do the following. All of you, I will give you exactly 10 minutes. In these 10, you have heard all these dialogue. You now understand what is contemplated. Some of you might have been fascinated by one particular facet of this discussion. Some of you might have all of this in mind. I want you to jot down, I want you to jot down specific small problem statements which need to be solved as a component for building such a large system. And I want you to mail these write-ups to me later. But you will write them now. Because oh, so, bad so after going back home, you are not going to do anything. 
So next 10 minutes, use your pen and pencil, use your mind, reflect on whatever we have discussed and write down any, you can take any particular aspect of the holistic problem. You can take taxonomy, you can take peer assessment, you can take general crowdsourcing, you can take voting, you can take content management. How do you manage videos? How do you manage uh, thing? what should be the... You can take content formats. You can take uh, the, the leadership evolution, voting. You can take incentivizing. You can take any one of these aspects or you can take multiple of these. Write down which are the problem statements such that each statement that you write resembles a topic for a seminar. I hope you are convinced that this activity alone can give rise to at least 100 seminar topics, each one worth its weight in gold, because when contributed to, it will actually result in further research and development and building these systems. That's what we have to do any which way. So you have actually a chance as kickstarters to contribute to this activity. And in fact, if ever a history is written, I'll make sure that names of all our students are written as the initiators of this activity. Provided, of course, you participate, not just because I have a roll number belonging to this course, in terms of what you write in next 10 minutes. So, right. Some of you are experts in hardware, might want to contemplate on the sizing and architecture of the hardware that will need to be implemented. Obviously, will require a cloud. How many cores in a cloud? What kind of system that you would use? Data management system, MySQL, or MongoDB with distributed architecture, or a combination of both? Would you care to use a content management system such as Drupal as a base of uh, the whole thing? How many of you have seen Drupal or known about Drupal? One, two, three, four. Are you aware of Drupal 8? Good. Drupal 8 is a version which actually permits API-based external development to be linked to the Drupal's inner manage, uh, content management system. It opens up a Pandora's box where you can independently create applications outside which are not necessarily written using PHP. So they could be, for example, Django and Python scripts running a transactional process outside or a web application outside which actually integrates with, uh, with Drupal. There is a conference on Drupal, by the way, in the coming week here in IIT. Those of you who are interested might participate in some of those sessions. Incidentally, we have decided that we'll use Drupal as the mainstay for the major content management. But I digress. So please apply your mind, write down one, two or three or whatever. Now you have five minutes left only. I'll keep quiet now, otherwise you'll get disturbed. All right, please stop writing. By the way, it was very obvious to me that five minutes or seven minutes is too short a period for people to consolidate their thoughts and write them. But the purpose was to ensure that your mind is initiated into that thinking. Okay. Now, I would like the following to happen. I would like you to spend at least 15 to 20 minutes today sometime but today only, and not late in the night, before you forget. You are all MTech or PhD students, so that means you would be able to find 15 to 20 minutes time, let us say before 6 p.m. today. Is that possible? If that is possible, I would like you to, we will set up a link on the Moodle immediately. I would like you to write a small snippet of your thoughts. So they need not be exactly elaborate titles or whatever, whatever. So some small snippet of what, 
one or two things that the ideas that come to you. You all have to submit this, and your submission will be taken as your attendance today. That is important because tomorrow there will be a new a, 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 a notice to all other people that if all other who are absent today have to pass this course, they have to independently think on this subject by contacting you and having a group or individual discussion if required and ask for a cup of tea at least if not for a treat if they do that and then they will have to submit a larger version of a similar thought process that is number one number two all of those who have not registered for a seminar topic or who have not already identified a topic for literature survey might choose from among the list which will be put up today evening by seven o'clock and maybe and more elaborate submissions which will be done by others which Firuza will put up maybe day after tomorrow, you may have to choose a particular topic of your choice for the literature self. Is that, is that okay with you? Next week I am not here. Now I realize that you already spent about an hour extra in recording and here uh, assessing your uh, 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 presentations. You will be spending another hour and a half in the month of March doing the same thing. That will have to be on a Saturday or Sunday. So in anticipation of that one and a half hour and in, and in recognition of the hour that you have spent, we shall not have any sessions next week. This will permit you to spend a little more time on preparation for your mid sem which I think you should buttress my confidence in you by scoring one notch better in each of the subjects that you appear for your mid sem right? But simultaneously you have to start work on the assignment. The first assignment which is of collecting a large number of papers and perusing them with the quick reading as I mentioned, as Sana Murthy mentioned and preparing a list of 20, 30, 40, 50 papers which are relevant has to be completed three days after the mid -sem. Is that a fair requirement? Fine. So in conclusion, all submissions before 6 p.m. today be selection of a topic of your choice from amongst these by those who have not identified a topic. Three, no lecture sessions next week because you will be spending time and you already spent time. And four, the first task of literature survey namely collecting 40-50 uh, uh, papers, uh, conferences, journals, reports. Somebody might be doing a literature survey on some specific methodology or approach, then you might write technical report citation, whatever, whatever you feel like. Okay. But that preparation has to be submitted before three days after the end of the medicine. Is that clear? We'll just write this down and uh, submit. Thank you. So enjoy your medicines.